there, battle buddies and healthy heroes. My name is Susie. I am not a medical professional. I'm just an enthusiastic nerd. I'm here to talk to you about leg defense. Now, before I show you the seven different moves I have to defend your legs from strikes, I want to talk about two battlefield strategies. These are mentalities or approaches that you might want to consider to defend your legs, but really it's aggression because some people say the best defense is a strong offense. So strategy number one is overwhelming your opponent to win the race. If you're trading, but trading strikes, but you're hitting them more than they're hitting you, you're gonna win that battle, especially if you can live within your armor and don't let your body actually take points of damage. If you're living within your armor and hitting them more than they're hitting you, you will finish that battle and go refit. This is especially wise if there's an opponent who has more range than you. If you've only got two short swords, they have a spear, a staff, or even a longsword, you might not want to get caught in a stalemate with them because they have that advantage. So you want to make a quick approach, overwhelm them with combos and aggression, uh, win that race, and if you can't overwhelm them with aggression, disengage, retreat, and find another strategic approach. That'll save your legs. And... Also, the second mentality is using counters to deter them from hitting your legs. So when someone is swinging at legs, it's kind of a lower strike, and so their arm and shoulder might be a little more exposed. You might be able to get in there with two hits, maybe even a counter combo, two or three hits for their one leg strike. And if you continue to punish them for going for your legs by hitting them more than they're hitting you with those counters, that will deter them from hitting your legs. That will defend your legs. But these seven moves that I'm going to teach you for defense, three of them involve your blade, four of them involve footwork. Why is that good for the battlefield? Eventually you will be toe to toe with a big bad who is swinging high numbers or damaging takeout carrier effects. And maybe it's a high stakes battle. You can't retreat. You can't afford to get hit. You're going to want these moves in your back pocket as options to block and protect yourself in those big scary battles. And why is this good for your body? These uh, blade defense moves rely on a lot of forearm strength and speed, strong grip in your hands with your wrists. So you'll be strengthening your arms, wrists and hands. And the footwork defenses rely on a strong and stable core and strong, accurate, effective legs. So I hope this helps. Have fun. Let's talk about leg defense. I have seven moves I would like to show you for different options for defending your legs in blocker combat. The first one is the blade down as a stance. The second one is twisting your blade. The third one is doing a little squat to drop your blades. And the next four are more footwork based. The fourth one is the double scoot back. The fifth one is a stance switch from your hip. The sixth one is a little toe flick. And the last one is the full flamingo. Now I'm gonna give you a few tips for each of these methods. I am making a leg defense video because historically my legs have always gotten chewed up. It's one of my weaknesses, so it's a work in progress for me, but I've learned a bunch along the way. This first stance is the most popular. Maybe leg defense is one of my weaknesses because I don't use this stance. I don't like how it feels. It feels slow and clunky, but you get great coverage. If you have your defensive blade, your short sword is down, you can block that side of your leg or even cross and block on that side. But talk to somebody else for tips on that one because I don't use it. I like both blades up and I'm trying to get faster with this next strategy, the forearm flip of your blade. You can do it on either side to defend either leg wherever they're swinging. And my tip for this one is forearm strength and grip strength. Uh, you need to work on your forearm muscles to, in order to make your blade move fast enough. And for grip strength, I actually saw a hand specialist once for some joint issues in my thumb. And he told me that these thumb pointer middle are the three fingers for precision, precision fingers, while the ring finger and pinky are your power fingers. These two are for power. And that helped me adjust the grip I have on my hilt. I now squeeze more with ring finger and pinky and keep the first three a little bit lighter. Um, 
you do need a firm grip on your blade to flip it down fast enough, but I try to protect my thumb and pointer, squeeze mostly from my ring and pinky, and flip my blade fast to bat their sword away when they come in at my leg. The third one is the squat. And my tip for this one is don't use this one very much. I used to use it exclusively. Uh, it is just an intuitive motion to try to uh, squat down and block with the bottom of my blade, but it does not give you enough coverage. It's good to know about the option of moving from your hips and doing a little bit of squat to maybe block a mid, a mid height strike, but it's not gonna get you low enough. If you have a fancy blade like this with a longer hilt and you're choked up, you might see some more success like that with a little squat. Um, but use that one sparingly. Don't make it your only go-to. Now, the next four I like the most because my favorite method for leg defense is having your legs not be there. So to make your legs not there when they're striking at you, you need some footwork. The first one is the double leg scoot. Just go straight back. My tip for this one is be aware of what sort of shoes you have on and keep your core tight are the two most important tips. So I recently got ninja boots. I don't have them on today, but they're split toe and they have a really rounded heel. There's not much of a heel on them at all. So it's easy to stay lighter on your feet and just scoot back without tripping over yourself. If you have big combat boots on or like clunkier light boots, you're gonna wanna really keep your heels up, keep weight on the ball of your feet and push off the ball of your feet. To protect yourself and stay well balanced so you're not tumbling or slipping, please engage your core. So you just got a strong athletic stance for that one. Uh, we then have the hip switch for footwork. And this stance switch, my tip for this one is to use it readily all the time, not only responsibly. I find if someone is swinging at my legs and I try to defend them by switching my stance, I am rarely fast enough. When you, even when I'm pulling from my hip, so my leg moves faster, I have the whole muscle engaged. It's still, if it's responding to a swing, I will still often get hit. However, I use this hip switching stance mobility constantly when I'm prowling around the yellow zone, when I'm squaring up on somebody waiting to engage. I just move around and I switch which lead leg is forward. When you are mobile, and constantly moving and light on your feet and you're presenting differently, it's going to be harder to hit your legs. So I love the stance switch option. I love being ambidextrous as a Florentine, just presenting both sides. And if I have to, and I get lucky and I'm fast enough, I can do it real quick to protect a leg as well. All right, the sixth move is a smaller toe flick. And my tip for this one is that you can only really use it if you're very confident that they're striking low. If they're telegraphing a big, big sweep and they're definitely going for your toes in a big toe sweep or a big loop like that, then it's very efficient if all you gotta do is flick and you can keep your blades up and you can keep the sword play going and just flick your toe. It's a, again, the core engagement so you don't lose your balance and there's a small weight shift, but it's really, if you got a good squeeze in your body, you can do it very efficiently but you have to be confident that they're going low enough. If they're aiming for anything near or higher, you're still gonna get hit. Which leads us to the seventh one, which is the full flamingo. That's pulling your entire leg back with a flip. And I can't recommend this one very much either because I think it's a little unsafe, I think it's a little unbalanced, and I think it's a little unnecessary to have a full uh, one-legged fighting stance. This is not very well balanced. But sometimes maybe uh, your toe flick just gets a little enthusiastic and maybe you wanna go in for a counter. There, if, if you are defending with a flick and you want to do a counter strike, your leg might move that way naturally as a sort of counterbalance for you. Um, but my, my tip for that is just please be aware of safety and don't do it all the time on purpose. You wanna have a better base for your legs. Just stay light on the balls of your feet. Don't always be a flamingo. Use it if you have to. <laughs> uh, if you need to flick and get the whole leg out of the way and maybe throw a counter in. And there you have it. Seven different moves to try to defend your legs in Boffer combat. I hope it helps. Have fun.